In Adam's hand here is an ESP8266 hooked up to a single WS2812 LED and a little Hubson uh, battery pack. This is a battery powered ESP8266 now. While the ESP8266 can tell RX power, I'm not using it for that. I'm actually causing my computer to connect to it and ping it and there's an application on my computer that looks at RX power of those pings and sends a color to the ESP8266. So as Adam moves around in three-dimensional space, you can see the relative strength changing. This looked kind of random to me at first, until I started to actually play with it, and then I realized that, no, it's not random, it's actually telling you the real RX power at every point. So as he moves through the same area, you can see that it turns red to green to blue, and, well, there's nice and solid blue, you can see the variations quite to a degree. It's just crazy how quickly the RX power can change from just a little bit. Moving just a couple of inches in one direction or the other causes massive changes in the RX power. I decided to do a couple things with this. Uh, one of them was to go play with the uh, a really long exposure on my camera. First, I configure a camera pointed at the area I'd like to check. I set it to the lowest ISO possible, a relatively large aperture, and a 60 FPS recording. Then, I try to make it as out of focus as possible and manually scan through the entire area. I then copy over the file into this tool that I have, super long exposure, and I start processing it. This takes a while, so better find something else to do. Once it's done processing, you can then take a look at the output. You can see very clearly the blue, where the signal is powerful, is great. But there's also these bands and areas where the signal is very poor. This shows that we're not just seeing random noise. I also did this at my parents' cabin with worse camera settings, but similar results. And all this had me wondering, do I have a better way to do this? And then I realized, oh yeah, I do. The mill. So, I have the mill following a basic zigzag pattern. While I'm running the same software that determines signal strength, I had to unplug the other antenna from this laptop because it was using diversity, which was messing up all of my results. But as the mill goes back and forth, I record the position of the mill, and the Wi-Fi strength at the same time in order to see if I can composite this into an image. Look at that interesting stuff going on. Just look at it. Yay! I took the data that the mill produced, going back and forth and back and forth over the square meter, one row every centimeter, and composited into this. You can see that there's a lot of interesting stuff going on at the mill. And that was neat, but I don't think this is as neat as it could be, so let's zoom in uh, into a little area, a little smaller, maybe a third of a meter by a third of a meter, and now let's add Z. We're going to bring this thing into the third dimension. What we're seeing right now is frame by frame the data from this set. Z is the frame by frame, and the X and the Y are on the mill table. The intensity is how bright the, uh, the signal is there. That's not really 3D, at least not by my definition. I'd rather view it in a much more, okay, I don't even know what you'd call this, but a cooler way. So this right here is actually the same engine I use on my No Euclid, my non-Euclidean ray tracing game. So as you might guess, this is actually being ray traced right now on my GPU. And it's ported to WebGL, so it can run inside my browser. And if you're interested, it could run inside your browser, too. Just visit that URL up there. So this right here is a representation of that data in 3D. Each one of these slices, all the way down, is a different layer on the mill. The areas that are more dense, as in these areas that you can actually see, are the areas where the signal was particularly good. All of the open areas are the areas where the signal was not particularly good. So, 
this data here can be rep is representative of the real data we were seeing in real life. This absolutely surprised me. I did not expect to see this much detail in a 360 by 360 by 180 millimeter area. It just blew my mind. But it's here. And you can even see that the distance between these features is roughly the same as one wavelength of 2.4 gigahertz, or a half a wavelength, I guess. So that just totally amazed me. You can play with these settings some, such as coloring it so that everything is an absolute, blue and purple being the best, and red being the worst. We can open up the range by which it looks at. So now we have a much, uh, I guess, more solid picture of where the signal is good. Again, any of the open areas is where the signal is bad. We can also flip this around. Wherever the signal is bad is most opaque, and wherever the signal is good is the clearest. So I can open this up some, and we can see some of the internal structure of how that whole area inside that part that I was measuring is shaped in the RF spectrum. Who knows, maybe people will take this and do something with Minecraft or something else. As far as I'm concerned, I think this project is just about done. So, I hope you liked it. Like this video if you did, and don't forget to, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks! Oh, it uh, kind of looks like Minecraft.